Greetings and salutations, everyone, and welcome back to Let's Play Subnautica. I am Kemchak Fisco. Come join me for an ocean adventure. So, as I'm sure you can tell, it's been quite the number of weeks since I've last played Subnautica. I have actually poked around in the world a little bit between the last video and this. Uh, the Ghost Leviathan is in my universe. In quite a few locations, actually. <laughs> We are uh, not quite ready to move forward. The ability to get cured has been added to the game. The ability to shut down the gun has been added to the game. However, nothing else. So I am going to hold off on doing any of the moving the story arc forward until the actual game is done to the point where we can actually finish, reach a finished state. But there is one thing I can do that I put off for quite some time. And that is read the databanks. I did find a new Degasi log while I was poking around, because obviously when I reset the world, I gotta run around and recollect all the PDAs, recollect all the data things, just to make sure I have everything. I got a new log, so this one's actually important. It's a Degasi log, it's called Deeper. I'm not sure why I missed it the first time, it may have actually been there before. We're already 200 meters below sea level, you wanna go deeper? Oh wait, no, Paul's the father. We're already 200 meters below sea level, and you want to go deeper? Look around us, Chief. I see water leaking through the hole. Water outside the hatch. We're drowning. Real slow. If rescue arrives, whatever shot us down is going to do it again. And again. Until it's shut off. Do you see an off switch around here, Chief? Why would an off switch any more likely be half a kilometer down? It's a hunch. That alien gizmo we found, it's got something to do with this. And we found it down here, not up there. You're mad. That may be, but I'm going all the same. I have an idea you two are going to follow. But if you do, be mindful. Your authority stopped at sea level. That's got to be a new log, because that's actually talking about shutting the gun down. That was something new to the game. So, as the new updates come out, by the time we get to the final one, I'm probably going to run around the world, recollect everything, just to make sure I have it all. One thing I also noticed is, for the life of me, I don't know why, we have a new audio log. It's not showing up anymore, but I actually got a ping that there's a new audio log on my uh, transmitter back at the sub. So... I kind of actually want to go check that out. I probably should go check that out before I go reading the rest of these. So let's actually go do that now. Oh, wait, that's the wrong portal. So give me just one second, I'll, I'll uh, meet you guys back in the ship. Oh no, the world's been reset since then. Shit. Well, I might as well leave this here. Oh yeah, the uh, prawn suit sits down now. When you, uh... I thought I was going to have to go outside and turn the field off all over again. Uh, apparently not. So when you get out of your suit, little Al now sits down. <laughs> it's actually pretty cool. Uh, so I inserted the artifact, but apparently when the world updated, it reset itself automatically. I'm not sure why, but that's the thing. So I gotta grab a few crystals, because some of the stuff is kind of, um, borked now, because I'm kind of in a pseudo-reboot of, of the world that I didn't invoke myself. Anyway, um, I will pick it back up when I get back to the sub, so give me a sec. Yeah, so one thing I like now is, since it rebooted, um, it, it did this last time. Ah, okay. So if it re if the world is reset and we're beyond a field, we're not stuck there. All you have to do is get out of your device and walk up, and the field will shut off. You still need a thing to get back in here, because I'm sure the field will go back up once I leave. But that's nice, because it last time I got trapped, I had to go through the portal, end up in Leviathan territory by the mountain, and make my way all the way around, because I didn't want to leave my prawn suit out there. So I did it all by frickin' sea glide, and that was horrifying. Hey, douche. Um, can we get over the thing? I'd like not to get eaten by the big dude. I Shit, time to go. Time to go. Piss off, bitches. I will saw you to death. Get away from me. Holy, don't shoot my sub, man. Don't shoot my sub. No, we're cool, man. We're cool. Just, just... Fuck off! That's not good. I'm making myself a target. Stop that. Come on, get in the... Get in, Big Mama! Come on! Oh my gosh. Well, that was... 
a thing. System we turn the lights off so we're a hole in the water? Jeebus. I'm not here. Go away. Fuck off. Okay, so we're back! That was a little sooner than I meant to pick it up. Let's see what the new message is, shall we? Oh, guess what? Space Kitty is allowed to be in Big Mama! Yay! Space Kitty! So yep, we get to have our Keep Calm Space Kitty poster now. This is Life Pot 2 accordance attached. We're way past our depth and bleeding O2. We had swim for the surface 500 meters straight up. Keep you posted. You out. Uh... We've already found his PDA at the island. What? I guess that was a thing that... Life Pot 2... Oh yeah. So one thing that changed is we don't have the uh, beacons like that anymore. They just become signals that pop up on our HUD that can be managed by the ping menu, I believe? If you go to the ping manager, you can actually turn them off and on manually. So it's a great way to uh, disable things if you don't want them. Want them, but you don't have to worry about them taking up a slot anymore. The other major upgrade that I've been waiting forever to happen in this damn game. Six upgrade slots for the for the, for the, for the uh, Cyclops. I don't have them, I think, because I still have an old Cima, uh, uh, Cyclops. Or it's because I haven't reset the world yet since the update count. Either way... I may have to recreate Big Mama, which would suck, but uh, we'll see. So we got a new audio log, we got uh, everything we needed, and now that we're in a nice stable location, I think I'm going to read the rest of the logs that I was, I was putting off. So we got the audio log out of the way, so that was actually the important part of this episode. So from here on out, for I don't know how many episodes, I'm going to be reading about the flora and the fauna. So I'll do the fauna first, because they're more interesting than the plants. But... If you guys aren't interested, feel free to skip ahead or pass on these next couple of episodes. That's all this is really going to be. So, just to let you guys know ahead of time. Life pod, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Let's do the fauna first. Well, if we're going to go with one that's more interesting, let's do the uh, carnivores first, because they're the more interesting of them. Okay, so we already did the lava lizard, the mesmer. I fucking hate that thing. The hatching enzymes, we uh, already assembled. Stalker, warper, we've already looked at. River prowler, this guy. So it's the non-electric yield variant. A fast, agile predator discovered in the Lost River biome. Powerful jaws used for both sav savaging prey, lovely wording, and warding off larger predators. Its torso is highly vulnerable, consisting predominantly of spinal column and cartilage. That seems like a bad evolutionary design flaw. It will aggressively keep its jaws facing its opponent, but smaller and faster life forms may have the advantage. Assessment, avoid. Sand Shark, ah, our fun friend that we ran into constantly in the beginning. A slow, powerful predator that dig... The digs burrows in the sand. Digs burrows? Aren't they the same thing? Or does he mean digs a burrow? That's that's not the same. Anyway, sorry, I'm, I'm getting caught up on the verbiage here. Uh, wordage, not verbiage. In the sand and ambushes its prey from below. Four dorsal fin. That'd be this thingy. Unusual location of this fin suggests the purpose might be related to unrelated to movement in the water. It may be employed in shifting sand beneath the surface or in mating rituals. Or it may simply be an evolutionary dead end. Segmented exoskeleton. The thick armor plating in the organism's back renders it relatively invulnerable, unmaneuverable, but almost immune to attack from above. I don't know, that thing seemed pretty damn maneuverable to me. Feet. The ill designed for ambulation, likely used to disturb the surface of the sand so the life form can burrow into the ground. Prey. Herbivores are twice its size. Assessment. Be vigilant for ambush in the sandy biomes. Oh, so the little, these little things are considered feet. I was wondering what they were talking about feet. So, the, the, the stalker, what, what did he say about uh, tame or avoid? That was the stalker, and the warper is just for the research, because we didn't go squat about that. Lava lizard, avoid, special in the flow of lava, mesmers, avoid, don't even look at it. Yeah, I know that. Crash fish, I hate these bastards. This bizarre species developed an emergency defense mechanism based upon mutually assured destruction. No shit. Concentration of sulfur build up in the organism over time, likely a byproduct of its diet. If the crash fish collides with something at a sufficient speed with the spikes on its torsos are impacted, triggering, expl triggering an explosive chemical reaction. Yeah, that would be kaboom. Forward mounted eye enables the creature to identify and track potential predators. Crash fish plant. Data points to evolve symbiosis with the local plant life species. Hypothesis. The plant evolved to speed to feed on sulfuric compounds secreted by the, cray the crash fish. I don't know why I keep wanting to call it crayfish. It's not a crayfish. Stronger, more protective plants provided superior nesting grounds, which in turn benefited the plant with more nutrients. Assessment. The sulfuric powder may, be ap may have application in the construction of a repair tool. You know that. You fuckers. Crab squids. 
This larger, this large predator can be found in the deep waters, where it lurks among the blood kelp and membrane trees in search of prey. Ten limbs have featured different appendages for swimming, walking, and offensive behavior. Feeds on small fish, which are identified in the murky waters through a combination of smell and light sensitivity. Somebody's bumping my sub. Attraction to light source suggests jelly rays and spinefish may be among its natural prey. Aggressive when approached. Assessment. Avoid. Yeah, and don't, you know, get out of your sea moth and leave the lights on like an idiot so it's drawing it in to kill it while you're in a su uh, underwater base. Just saying. Not my smartest move. Crab snake. This is the fucker that warped through the world and appeared in the safe zone. This life form appears to live in symbiosis with a jelly shroom. All encountered specimens have been located within 50 meters of jelly shroom flora, frequently within the plants themselves. Capable of rapid movement when striking its prey. Yeah, we've seen that. Large twin claws mounted on the oral cavity penetrate or latch onto its prey. We've seen that. Display territorial behavior, patrolling the cave system in which they reside. Presence of caps and cabs? Cabs, yes, they're cabs. They drive around in cabs in New York City. Presence of crab snakes may deter herbivores from feeding on the jelly shrooms itself. Assessment avoid. Bone shark. Yeah, you guys are pretty much everywhere. Powerful predator that lives in small groups and fiercely defends its hunting grounds. Thickly armored exoskeleton suggests defensive adaptation either from two larger predators or in species aggression. Makes sense. Large eyeballs, consistent with the high light sensitivity, likely for hunting luminescent prey in low light environments. Generally slow and unresponsive. They will act with uncompromising aggression against any threat to their territory. Assessment avoid. Biter. This is the little leech dude. I hate these things, they're so annoying. Small aggressive predator, 94% muscle, 4% connective tissue, 2% brain. Likely indiscriminate when hunting. Anything injured is fair game. Yeah, so it's it's like a piranha or something. Special olfactory antenna, employed in detection of bodily fluids in the water. Secondary pair of eyes, striking similarities to the sand sharks. Likely dedicated to detecting the periphery, peripheral movement of larger predators. Overdeveloped tail fin. Favors outpacing and out, uh, outnumber, outnumber, sorry, outnumbering their prey over individual maneuverability. I'm assuming that's maneuverability. That's kind of a weird spelling. I've seen that before. Prey. Small herbivores, but according to calculations, creatures up to 100 times the biter's body weight could succumb to a focused assault. Avoid large groups. Do not, try not to bleed. Yeah, I'll work on that. Amp eel. This is the electrical version of the other eel. A large inquisitive predator found inhabiting the deeper waters of the reefs in bold bush colonies. Strong and territorial, torsomented prongs capable of generating a powerful electric current. Ampiel has recorded has been recorded using electricity to incapacitate its prey. If a faster, stronger, and hungrier predator lives on the reefs, it appears to avoid the ampiel. Huh. <laughs> Lovely. Alright, so let's look at the scavengers and parasites. Bleeder. Oh no, these were the leeches. The other ones were the frickin' piranha. My bad. A simple parasitic organism with little more, little more evolved than a common space tick. Ductile sac, used for collection and digestion of blood, so it's literally a leech. Jaw, rows of teeth and mandibles used to attach to the skin of its victim. Prey, known to target live organisms. The bleeder's slow speed and poor defenses suggest they have evolved primarily as carrion feeders. Inconvenient and unhygienic, to say the least. But it, oh yeah, the shuttle bug, that freaky guy that generates light. Uh, cave crawler. These are the spider dudes. This, well, the spider-looking crabs. Agile territorial carry-on feeders. Well adapted to both land and sea. Gas exchange membrane. Absorbs essential gases from the air or water of base. I can read this. Absorbs essential gases from the air or water for basic bodily regulation. So it can live above or underwater. Mandibles. The species seeks out, seeks out corpses in packs before defending its claim while the corpse is devoured. Assessment. Inconvenient. Yeah, you could say that. Lava larvae. A grub-like species that appears to lack the sense of sight and smell, but is able to sense and drain thermal and electric energy in the environment. Underside suction cup. Capable of attaching to smooth surfaces and generating high-pressure suction. Torso. Thick scales protecting ex from extreme temperatures. Lacks traditional digestive system. It tries to do energy sources of all kind. Draws energy from its prey to survive. Avoid when piloting powered vehicles. Yeah. My personal thanks to each and every one of you for tuning in. You all are awesome viewers. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch my videos. It means a lot to me, and I do hope you enjoy them. So you all take care of yourselves. If you want to see more of me, keep up the video on the list, or stay tuned for more. Feel free to leave a comment below. Please remember to hit that like button if you enjoyed the video. In the meantime, fare thee well, everyone.